There have been huge changes to this year's retirement list. Last week, BrickTap broke the news that 10 sets are no longer projected to retire at the end of this year, and 17 sets that were initially slated to retire in 2025 are now pushed up to this year. I've seen a lot of confusion out there in the community as to whether these sets are actually retiring and where this information came from, so let me first clarify this. LEGO doesn't directly tell us what sets are retiring besides adding a few sets here and there to their last chance to buy section on their website. So there are a handful of other sources out there, for example, Brick Fanatics that uses vendor order forms and things like that to put together a retirement list. BrickTap, on the other hand, creates their list by directly scraping this information from LEGO's website. I've conducted audits of the 2022 and 2023 retirement lists, and both times BrickTap came out the most accurate over Brick Fanatics and BrickSet. Now, BrickTap posts an update to the retirement list each month on the LEGO League subreddit, and for this month of May, they posted that on the first of the month. But BrickTap also has a Discord server where they have a channel that automatically posts real-time retirement date updates from the LEGO website. The morning of the 8th, LEGO updated a large batch of sets, which includes all of the sets that I'm going to talk about in this video. So while the BrickTap list for May that's currently showing on the LEGO League subreddit doesn't reflect these changes, they will be reflected in June because these changes happen after the May list was already posted. I hope this clears the air out there for everyone, and I definitely recommend you join the BrickTap and BrickHound Discord servers. They're both filled with a ton of great services and resources on top of the real-time retirement date updates. In this video, I'll start by covering the sets that got pushed off the retirement list for this year, then I'll move into sets that are now projected to retire this year, and finally, I'll share my thoughts from an investing standpoint on the sets that got pushed into 2025. Let's waste no more time and dive into the four Star Wars sets that are no longer projected to retire this year. First off, the Darth Vader helmet, set number 75304. This is now slated to retire in 2025. This is one of the earliest Star Wars helmets released by LEGO, all the way back from the second wave that came out in 2021. Even though it seems like LEGO won't be continuing this helmet line, they're still selling well since there's now three of them continuing into 2025. The Ghost and Phantom 2 set number 75357. Many people speculated that this set would get extended because of how short a shelf life it would have had if it retired this year. Now it'll have just over a two year shelf life, which is much more typical for Star Wars sets. The Executor Super Star Destroyer, set number 75356. I'm a little surprised that this set was extended. With the three new additions to the Starship collection, it seemed like this one would actually retire. And the Coruscant Guard Gunship, set number 75354. This is another set that would have had a pretty short shelf life. It's very interesting that LEGO ran four times insider's points on this set during May the 4th promotions when they were planning to extend the set anyways. If you're enjoying this video, I'd appreciate it if you drop a like and subscribe to my channel. On to LEGO City, there are just two sets that got extended. The Fire Rescue Plane, set number 60413. It just came out in January of this year, so it makes sense that it will now continue into 2025. Then the Space Science Lab, set number 60439. This one's a Target exclusive, and I'm also not surprised that it got extended, considering it only would have had a 9-month shelf life. There were two Harry Potter sets that also got extended. The Hogwarts Express and Hogsmeade Station, set number 76423. Who could have seen this coming? LEGO always loves to have at least one or two Hogwarts Express on the shelves, so I wouldn't be surprised this set even gets extended past 2025. And set number 76424, the set was really going under the radar and was only going to have a 10 month shelf life, but because of how much volume it's selling each month on Amazon, I'm really not surprised to see it go. Christmas Tree, set number 40573, I'm really sad to see this one go. It was one of my favorite sets from an investing standpoint but maybe I'll pick it up next year if it actually retires. And the last set that got extended was a Nissan Skyline GTR, set number 76917. Everyone who picked this set up for a quick flip op release, but didn't get to sell it, is going to be very sad to see this set stay around for another year. It makes sense for LEGO though, this is one of the most popular Speed Champion sets they've ever made. Now onto the sets added to the retirement list for this year, we have the Disney Celebration Train, set number 43212. I was very surprised to see this one move up. It's been very popular. I'm sure it's going to have very high demand in retirement. The only downside I see for the set in terms of investing is how much supply may be out there. So it could have a slower start to retirement than others. Bell's Storytime Horse Carriage, set number 43233. This one could be a bit of a sleeper. It was only released in January of this year, has low supply on eBay with none listed under MSRP, and it's moving 2,000 units a month on Amazon. 
I expect there to be low supply on this set in retirement, and I think it'll probably be a better set to sell on Amazon over eBay. Typically, sets like this have much more demand on Amazon in retirement. The Space Research Rover, set number 42602. The numbers behind this set are very shocking to me. It just came out in April of this year, and it's an Amazon exclusive. But get this, it's only sold 50 units in the past month. That is insanely low movement, and it's not like people are buying the set from other stores, it's only available from Amazon and Lego. They really overestimated the popularity of this set, and I could see it either disappearing early because Lego won't make any more production runs of the set, or it could linger for months and months on Amazon because they have a ton of supply. Electric car and charger is set number 42609. This set will only have a year of shelf life. It's at least selling 100 plus on Amazon, a little bit better than the last sets, but it's available at every major retailer, so I'm sure the total number of units sold this month is much higher. Hulk vs. Rhino Truck Showdown, set number 10782. I haven't paid super close attention to the Spidey and his amazing friend sub-theme, but I did a quick check on the last two years of sets that retired, and this theme has done surprisingly well overall. The best so far was 10783, Spider-Man at Doc Ock's Lab. It had an MSRP of $29.99 retired in 2022, and the buy box on Amazon is already up to $72. The minifigures in this set add up to well over $16 in value, which is almost the entire MSRP of $19.99. So this one could be an interesting sleeper set as well. Nano Gauntlet, set number 76223. We now have another of the Marvel relics retiring. Uh, the first one, Thor's Hammer, has been a very fast mover out of the gate. Additionally, the Captain America shield is retiring this year. There's definitely collectability to these sets with Marvel fans wanting to display them all together. The Infinity Gauntlet is still set to retire past 2024, so anyone wanting to display the Nano Gauntlet alongside it will have to go to the aftermarket to buy it. It also has an extra $10 of perceived value built into the MSRP, since it's $70 while the Infinity Gauntlet is $80. It's moving great numbers on Amazon with 1000 plus sold in the past month, and there's significantly low supply on this set only eight third-party sellers on Amazon, and under 40 listings on eBay. I expect many investors to overlook this set just because it's a part of the Marvel line, but I'll be watching the supply on this set very closely over the next couple months, and it very well could be a set that I invest in this year. Wolverine's Andamantium Claws, set number 76250. Now this is actually the third displayable Marvel set that's retiring this year. It's a Target exclusive, and it will only have a year and a half shelf life. I'm not as excited about this set though. Its audience is much more niche, so I expect demand to be lower in retirement as well. But if the supply is low enough, which it could be, it may be a surprise to some people. The Office set number 21336. This one is interesting. It's based off a very popular TV show and packed with exclusive figures. It's also a Walmart exclusive set. So this is for sure a set that I'll be watching for investing. The Crafting Box 4.0, set number 21249. The past three crafting boxes have been just okay for investing. You need to get them at a very discounted rate to make a decent profit. Dried Flower Centerpiece, set number 10314. This is a major addition to the retirement list. We now have the second botanical set set to retire. We all know the huge success that Birds of Paradise had, so there's going to be a ton of eyes on this set. But this one's a bit of a wild card. This is the weakest botanical set available by far right now. Most in the line are selling 10,000 plus a month on Amazon, but this one's only selling at 2,000. It's also not a set that you can display in a vase like others in the line. Many people had hesitations on Bird of Paradise last year, which is what caused it to be so undersupplied. I think many people will also be avoiding this set because it's not the best one available at the time. But at the same time, we do need to consider that this set is not a Target exclusive like Bird of Paradise was. There will be much more supply at other retailers, and I could easily see this being a set that Amazon gets a ton of at the end of the year, and it stays in stock for 6 plus months after it should have retired. So for that reason, I'm still on the fence about this set. The Fauna Collection, set number 31211. The numbers for this set look great, it'll only have a 1 year shelf life, it's selling 500 plus a month on Amazon, and has very low supply on eBay. It'll definitely be one to keep on your radar. Visit to the Vet Clinic, set number 10438. I don't have much experience investing in the Duplo theme. For so long, I've only sold on eBay where this theme doesn't sell the best. But now that I'm selling on Amazon, I will need to look at these sets more closely in the future. Lloyd's Elemental Power Mac, set number 71817. 
another short shelf life at just 10 months and it has yet to go on sale. There could be some potential here, but I'll likely be passing because I like the larger Ninjago mechs a little bit more for investing. Mr. Oz's space car set number 71475. If this set doesn't get discounted heavily like many of the other dream sets available have been, there could be some potential for investing, but I doubt I'll be picking any up. Penguin Family Snow Adventure, set number 71430. I'm not a huge fan of the Super Mario theme in general. Most have not done well unless you got them significantly discounted. With this one only having a year shelf life and it never being discounted so far, it could be one of the better performers of the theme. Dory's Sunken Shipwreck Adventure, set number 71432. This set also will only have a year long shelf life. It'll be interesting to see if these new Super Mario sets perform better in retirement now that most investors are just passing up on this theme completely. And finally, Creative Color Fun, set number 11032. While this set is a Walmart exclusive, there is very little investment potential in classic sets and I'll only buy them at 80% off. Those are all of the sets that got added to the 2024 retirement list. There are definitely quite a few sets on that list that have some investing potential and will be ones to watch. Now back to sets that were originally slated to retire this year, but were pushed out. Here are my thoughts from an investing standpoint. As I state in pretty much every other video on my channel, my investing strategy is to buy sets at a low enough price so that I'm able to sell them a year to a year and a half after retirement for double my money after shipping and fees. I'm a big believer in compounding my money as quickly as possible. So if I buy a set for investing that's projected to retire, but then it gets pushed off the list, I will sell that set now and move that money into a set that's actually retiring this year. Because I always buy my sets at the lowest discount possible, most of the time I'm able to sell off these sets for a small profit even though they're still available from retailers. Even if I take a small loss, my money will be growing much faster over time because it will be invested in a set that will have a whole year to appreciate in value well, my money would have just been stagnant if I held on to that set that didn't retire. This strategy isn't for everyone and that's okay. There are many ways to invest in Lego and that's what makes it so great. I want to take a moment to specifically highlight the Star Wars sets that got pushed out. I know many people probably purchased the gunship, the Super Star Destroyer, the Ghost, or the Darth Vader helmet. First off, I can be a bit conspiratorial about LEGO, but I totally think LEGO intentionally waited till just after May the 4th promotions to make these changes. I picked up all of those sets during May 4th from LEGO, except the Darth Vader helmet, but because of the amazing discounts we were able to stack up during this promo, I've been able to sell all of my gunships and ghosts for a pretty nice profit, especially since it was only a two week hold time. I have more of the Super Star Destroyers than the other two, so I'm still in the process of selling those. I want to be very clear here and say that I am not in the business of flipping Lego sets. I buy sets with the intention to hold them over a year into retirement, but when the retirement date changes, that's when my strategy changes and I liquidate that inventory. You may be happy with the discounts you got on the gunship, Super Star Destroyer, Darth Vader helmet, or the ghost, and you want to hold on to them for another year, and that's not necessarily a wrong decision. As I said, everyone has different strategies, and as long as you're making money in the end, you're doing great. Alrighty, those are my thoughts on the retirement date changes for May. I'd love to hear in the comments below your thoughts on these changes, and if there are any sets now retiring that you're interested in for investing. While you're down there, I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like on the video and subscribe to my channel for more weekly Lego investing content. With that, thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. As always, my videos are not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, I'm only sharing my journey as a LEGO investor, and I encourage you to do your own research before buying any LEGO sets.